So welcome to the third tutorial in the Ratchet and Foe Gap series. Uh, I've had to record this video quite a few times, so sorry for the delay. Uh, my screen recorder keeps on corrupting it. So uh, anyway, in this video we're going to be looking at uh, table views. Uh, this is a type of element in Ratchet, and it's literally just uh, a list uh, which can be buttons, and we can put toggles on them, and we can do all sorts of fancy things. We will also be looking at how to put a footer uh, on our app, which will just dock to the bottom. So uh, that's the first thing I'm going to do actually. First we're going to do the footer. So what we want to do is create a div with a class of bar, bar-standard, and bar-footer. And what these basically do is this is just our standard bar. Uh, it's just the bar class and that will set our basic elements for it. Uh, bar-standard, we'll have a look at this later. This is just a standard type of bar again. And bar-footer is so that will mount to the bottom of the page and then close this div off and inside of here is where we can put the content for our footer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, two buttons and these are going to be icons so I'll have a compose icon and a trash can icon for delete and we'll add a class equal to icon then icon dash compose and you can find these on the Ratchet documentation uh, right at the bottom of the components page and it's got a list of them here with the uh, designs here. So we're using icon dash compose and icon dash trash wherever it is. Somewhere down there, I can't find it. So just close off that a tag, and we'll also want to add an a href of hash. It's just a uh, it won't link anywhere. It'll just link to the same page. And then what we we'll do is we'll duplicate this and icon dash trash. Now these buttons won't actually do anything, they're just for testing purposes. And obviously don't put a content in here because our content is going to pretty much be the icon itself. So now we can do is just save this and live preview it. And that will open up your new Chrome window. And here it is, you can see we've got the two icons in the bottom left here. And I'll put that into the emulation mode. And you can see on a proper screen size. And you'll see the footer docks to the bottom properly. Next thing we want to do is make sure this compose button is on the left and a trash on the right. So to do this we can literally just go pull dash right as a new class. Uh, similar to bootstrap, so if you come from bootstrap then uh, that will be familiar. And then pull dash left on the compose as well. So go ahead and refresh the page and you'll see that the icon has now been pulled over to the right just as we want and these are in fact buttons or links rather. So jump back into your code. And the next thing we're going to do is look at the table rows, as I said before. So what you want to do is between your header and your footer, uh, just create a bit of a gap I've already got here. And this is where we're going to put the table row. So as I said, these are just basically lists and you'll, you'll see when I show you. So what we're going to do is kind of create an unordered list, so a UL, and give it a class of table-view, sorry, in lowercase. And obviously close it off. And then inside of here, we're going to put a list item. And inside this list item, we're just going to put item1 and uh, add a class to this li, which is going to be table-view-cell. So table view is just the sort of container, the unordered list container. And then these list items are the actual each of these separate rows. And they have a class of table-view-cell. And that just, again, adds styling to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste these three lines here, the list item, uh, just to four times or something, and change this to two, and then three, and then four. And just save that, and head over to the live preview, and you'll see we've got these three items here, but we created four. So what you'll notice is that item one is actually being covered up by this header, the header is overlaying it, but there's no sort of margin uh, from the top. So this is when a, uh, a custom style sheet comes in. So head into the CSS folder here and just create a new file called style.css. So once you've created your style sheet, we need to go in the index.html file and obviously link this up. So I've just duplicated the other style sheet and we'll just change this to style.css and save that. Obviously there's not going to be any notable difference right now because this style.css is empty. So what we're going to do is style the body tag and we just need to give this a margin to the top and I'll put the margin dash top 
and we'll set this to 45 pixels. Uh, the easiest way just to figure this out is through trial and error. Just keep trying random values and see if it works. Uh, I figured out for the iOS and base design is 45 pixels and for Android uh, I haven't tried it so you can sort of figure that out, just play around the pixels. For Android it's slightly taller, the header bar, so you'll need to take that into consideration. So we've added a margin top to uh, as 45 pixels and that'll push all of the content down by 45 pixels apart from that header. So go ahead and refresh now and you'll see the item 1 is now completely showing. And actually 45 pixels might be a bit too much, I'll try 43. Okay, 43 looks perfect, that looks how it's supposed to be. Obviously you could also have a look through the Ratchet uh, CSS files to have a look at how tall it should be, but trial and error is just easier. Obviously now we've got all four items showing and it's all looking good. Right now though, these aren't links, so let's have a look how we can make them links. So I'm just going to remove all of these list items except for one, and we'll put a href equals, and then we'll set it to hash so it goes nowhere, and give it a class of, uh, I'll leave that blank for now, but we'll come back to that in a moment. And inside of this a tag, we're going to put item 1. And I can just copy this, sorry, copy the list item roller and paste that a few times. And then go ahead and refresh. And then we've got four items. Uh, I left them all as item 1, but it's not a problem really. Uh, we've got four items, and these are in fact links. You can see I'm clicking on these right now. Uh, but because they don't go anywhere, they're just staying selected. The class that we can give to these is a class called navigate. dash right and I'll add these to, this to all of them so I'll paste it there, there and there save that and what's the difference here? we've now suddenly got these arrows uh, I've forgotten the name of them they're just arrows going onto the next page sort of signifying which direction you'll be uh, moving in so when you click these it will sort of slide uh, to the left with the new window over here uh, I hope that made sense, I'm not sure if it did but something I want to point out is Let's duplicate this style sheet right here and set it to ratchet dash theme dash android. That will give us the android styling rather than the base styling. And now we refresh it. So now it's got the android styling. Uh, for one, the header is slightly taller, so it's slightly covering item one. But there's no arrows. The reason there's no arrows is because Android has some design guidelines. And I believe iOS has the same thing and probably Windows Phone as well. Uh, the design guidelines for Android say you shouldn't put arrows on these links. I'm not entirely sure why, but that is one of their design guidelines. So iOS likes to have arrows, Android, no. Um, so Ratchet takes care of this for you, and it removes those arrows. These still act, uh, act as links like normal, but just no arrows. So you will notice this across most Android apps. They won't have arrows, which is kind of weird, but... That's the design guidelines, so we'll stick with that. And I'll put a link to the design guidelines in the description below if you want to have a look at that. There's a couple of things uh, about navigation bars at the bottom and a few other things that you'll need to take consideration. So one other thing that we can do uh, that I'll show you in this video is something called cards. So we can wrap uh, elements inside of cards and basically they'll have a bit of a margin around them. So what we can do is just tab all of this in for our code structuring purposes and I'll just speed through this. So once we've tabbed this all in by one, uh, what we're going to do around here is create a div with a class of card. And of course we will uh, close this off. So just paste that at the end there. And now we'll go and preview it and you'll see we've now got these cards and I'll just turn off the Android styling quickly and put it back to the base style. And you can see we've now got this sort of margin around it. So both ways will be used in different use cases. So this case might be nice if you've got not much content or you can decide for yourself basically. So in some cases having the margin around the edges would be nice, some cases it wouldn't be so nice. So you've always got that option of having cards and this works for multiple different elements as well, not just the table rows or table views, sorry. So obviously you can just go over to phone get build and uh, obviously sign in and go into your app here and press update code and 
you, what you need to do is put all of your files back into that distribution.zip folder that we made or whatever zip folder you made and just package it all, package it all up and re-upload it here and then once you've uploaded it if you enabled hydration before on your app you'll be able to just pull up your phone and uh, as soon as you open the app it will check for an update and if it checks if it finds an update it will push that to your phone otherwise you'll have to reinstall your app but I recommend getting hydration anyway so I'm gonna leave this video here thank you for watching don't forget to comment rate and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video